Yeah, hi everybody, it's DC here. It's the uh, 12th of the 4th, 23. And, um, right, where do I start? I've been missing a lot of work, I've been missing a lot of videos, a lot, lot of experiments. As you perhaps know, I've been all over the place after COVID. I'm getting back to normal now, but my workshop's in a bit of a mess. I've got half my tools and meters and spanners and everything are, are in another another country <laughs> so um, I've, I'm left here with limited um, tools and um, etc to, to work with so what what can I do but just to keep the projects going to keep uh, uh, my mind going as well <laughs> um, I've got here an old thing that I've been an old experiment that I've been playing with and um, it's about getting uh, electrical potential from the ether. Well, I've come to find out that um, it's very similar. What I'm doing is very similar to Alfred Hubbard. And Alfred Hubbard, um, in the 1900s, um, he made a, a generator. And lo and behold, look at this. Uh, a generator very similar to mine. Well, when I look at it, I'm thinking, wow, maybe I am on the right track with this this contraption that I've got here. So, reading between the lines, um, if, if you look up uh, Alfred Hubbard on the internet, you perhaps come across this motor here. But um, in all the readings, um, they're, they're very vague. Um, I think there was a pattern for this but uh, the, either the pattern's gone missing or something and a lot of the details are lost so really i'm still flying blind with what i'm doing although i sort of know that i'm on the right wavelength so uh, hubbard, hubbard had a um, some steel tubes basically he wrapped copper wires around them exactly like what i've done here and, and then he, what he did, he pulsed a very high frequency through them. And that would be a, f a flash pulse. So it would be like um, a square wave, a square wave. So really, that square wave is what I'm doing with this contraption here. Pulse a pulse modulator, which I've got from China. Very clever, the Chinese. Anyway, they've sent me this pulse modulator, which uh, I'll have to just set up. It works to 12 volt to 24 volts. I haven't got my power supply, that's gone missing now. So I've got a 24 volt battery and uh, I've got other batteries in the background here that are charged up, ready to go to act as my power source. Now the idea is that I now actually power something <laughs> from, from this device. So I've set myself a target of of powering a fairly big horsepower uh, DC motor. So that's the challenge for me now. I'll probably be working with a friend of mine who is a, uh, a teacher and he does it engineering and electronics. So um, this is just, I'm just getting going on this now. So uh, yeah, so going back to, to the project, we've got um, power source, a battery, we've got a car transformer as a 24 volt, 12 volt um, high voltage spark, um, spark generator, a, tes a Tesla coil, a little Tesla coil there, and I've, I've got this modulator. So the idea is we modulate a frequency through this fluorescent tube, which is in the centre of these other tubes here. So this tube here is a steel tube with no winding on it. There's no winding on it. And then we've got all these other six tubes around it. Yeah. So when I flash, when I flash this here with about, I think it's um, 25 to 30,000 volts from here with this pulse modulator, the pulses are just going down this tube, bump, 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 at the frequency 
sat here. So that's where I'm up to. Now what I believe is key, absolutely key to this is how it's how it's wound up, how it's how do you do the windings. Um, according to um, Hubbard, um, he doesn't appear to have any capacitors in this device. Sorry for about the shaking of the right. And um, there's a couple of suggestions where they use variable capacitors to tune the device to whatever you're driving. So it, it's anybody's guess what the actual wi wiring is to, to actually power something. Um, and that's really where I'm at. The only clue that I've got is that uh, it does suggest that there's square waves, pulses. So here again, look, he's got a battery. We've got an oscillator, which we've got with the um, pulse width modulator. And this is, this is my next step, is to experiment with, with um, this. I've had a little bit of an epiphany with the wiring on this. Uh, I don't know whether you can see this. We've got wires from this wire is from the winding on that tube, which goes all the way to the other end. Yeah. And obviously this wire here, this tube and so on. So the six wires at this end and six, six wires at the other end. Yeah. With the cent the center one acting as a primary flash. It's not a winding, but it's a flash. So the idea is when, when a flash, when I flash this center tube here, the, the, the flash as it goes through, it, it travels along and obviously it affects the steel in these tubes and, and it pushes, it pushes a pressure to pressurize something a potential at this other end here so that's what i'm after is potential at this other end and i'm hoping to drive a considerable load with this so what we're trying to do really is is drive a huge load from a very small battery um so as you can imagine the uh it's almost impossible. You think, oh, it's impossible to do that. But actually, I think it is possible because we can gain extra energy out of the ether. As the pulse goes along here, it draws the potential in, through and out. So, so what's happening along, along here, the flash, it, the flash goes in all these six, all these six scaffold tubes along along, along, which pushes the potential out on these other wires here. I'm looking through the camera. Here, now then, now that's, that's all well and good, isn't it, folks? But, but, here's the but. <laughs> I like the but. If these three wires are connected to negative to start with, to start with before I even flash you know before I even flash the system and these three wires here look are connected to positive what have we got we have got three wires here negative and three wires here I can do it here there we are three wires here positive so as soon as that's connected up to a to a battery source or to a dc source you've got positive on one side and negative on the other doing nothing but it's sitting there the potential sitting there so the idea is now is with the potential just sitting there when i flash when i flash the center core here guess what happens it pressurizes the the potential here to even a greater a greater value 
So we've got greater value each side, positive, and a greater value negative. Wow, that's my epiphany here because that's where I see it going. That's where I see that me connecting these wires up here to a high, high, a high horsepower DC electric motor. In theory, that's my, that's my take of it. So I hope you enjoy this experiment. I've not done it yet. This is work in progress. So I guess this, what this is, is a lead in to the next video on um, how it turns out. <laughs> so there we go, folks. Um, it's D DC signing out for now. And um, hopefully um, in the near future I could come back and we've cracked this. What I will say is with this system that I'm, I'm hoping to do here, this little system will drive a house. There'll be enough energy for, for a car, you'll drive a car. So you won't need all them huge batteries in your cars. No, you'll just have a little battery just an ordinary car, 12 volt battery, the normal type, you know the ones I'm referring to. And uh, it will be self-charging, the battery will be self-charging, but you'll be able to draw as much power off as you want in, for, for, to drive your wheels. In other words, you're never going to run out of energy, you're never going to run out of power, because it's there. It's in the ether. So... Just leaving you with these sketches. You'll probably recognise them on the internet. Alfred Hubbard. I guess what I'm doing here is my take on the Alfred Hubbard motor. Okay, that's DC signing out for now. I will catch you again. Bye.